In this lecture, you will learn about the math object in JavaScript and some of its useful properties and methods. The math object allows us to perform mathematical tasks on numbers. And unlike other objects, the math object does not have a constructor. Let's understand this. So the math object in JavaScript is a static object. That means all the properties and methods of math object can be used without creating a math object first. So for example, if we want to use a method or a property of a number object, first we will have to go ahead and create that object using new keyword like this, right? Then we can assign this object to a variable. Let's call that variable num. And then on this num variable, on this num object, we can call the methods or the properties of the number object like this, right? On the other hand, this math object is a static object. So in case of a math object, we don't have to create an object using new keyword. We can simply go ahead and call the methods or the properties on the math object itself. For example, math.random. Okay, so here we are not creating an object for this math constructor using new keyword. We are simply calling the method or the property on this math object. And this is possible because this math object is a static object. All right. So let's comment this code. Now in JavaScript, math object provides eight mathematical constants that can be accessed as math properties. And the most common math property is pi, which returns the value of mathematical pi. So on this math object, we can call this property pi. Okay, and this pi is a constant property and it returns the value of mathematical pi. Okay, so to check that, let's log it in the console. And if I save the changes, you can see the value of mathematical pi has been logged here. In the same way, we have another constant property on this math object, which is math dot square root of 2. Okay, and this property returns the value of square root of 2. If I go ahead and save the changes, you can see the value of square root of 2 has been returned. And in the same way, we also have one more constant property, which is square root of 1 underscore 2. And this returns the square root of 1 by 2, the value of square root of 1 by 2. If I save the changes, here you can see the value of square root of 1 by 2 has been returned. So pi returns the value of mathematical pi. Square root 2 returns the value of square root of 2. And square root 1 underscore 2 returns the value of square root of 1 by 2. Okay. And apart from these three properties, we also have five other properties on this math object. But these three properties are the most commonly used ones. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and comment this code here. Now, in JavaScript, there are four common methods to round a number to an integer. And all these methods are available on math object. And the first method is math.round. Okay, this math.round method returns the rounded value of a number which we pass to this method to its nearest integer. Okay, so if I pass maybe 2.14 here. In that case, the nearest integer to this value 2.14 is this integer 2. So that will be returned by this round method. Let's see that by logging it in the console. If I save the changes, you can see 2 has been returned. Now let's copy this one more time and let's paste it here. And this time, let's change it to 2.14. Five, four. Now, in this case, the nearest integer to this value 2.54 will be 3, right? So here, this round method will return 3. If I save the changes, you can see 3 has been returned. Let's take another example. Here, let's say minus 2.54. So the nearest integer to this value minus 2.54 will be minus 3. And that has been returned, okay? So remember that. The round method returns the nearest integer of a given fractional value. 
Then we also have another method, which is this seal method. So math dot seal. And this seal method returns the value of a given floating point number rounded up to its nearest integer. Okay, so remember it returns a value, an integer value rounded up. So for example, if I pass 2.14 here, the it will the seal method will round this value to its nearest up integer, upper integer. So in this case it will return 3. Okay, let's go ahead and check it by logging it in the console. If I save the changes, here you can see it has returned 3. If I pass maybe 2.54, in that case also it, it will return 3. Okay, so it will round up the number to its nearest integer value. Okay, it will round up. And the opposite of seal method is the flow method. So let me copy these two statements. Let's paste it here. And instead of seal, let's use flow method. This flow method returns an integer value rounded down. Okay, so the flow method returns the value of a given, you know, a floating point number rounded down to its nearest integer. And this should be flow. Okay, if I save the changes, you can see in both these cases it has returned true. So this seal method rounded up this uh, this floating point number to its nearest upper integer value, and this floor method rounded down this floating point number to its nearest integer value. So seal method rounds up the value to its nearest integer, and the flow method rounds down the value to its nearest integer. Finally, we also have another method which is trunk. Okay, so math dot trunk. And this trunk method returns the integer part of a given floating point number. Okay, so if I pass 2.13, the integer part of this value is 2. So that will be returned by this trunk method. And to prove this, let's go ahead and log it in the console. Okay, if I save the changes, you can see it has returned 2. Now, let's copy this. Let's paste it here. And this time, let's say 2.93. And still, this trunk method will return true because it will only return the integer part from this fractional number. If I save the changes, again, it has returned 2. Okay, so the trunk method returns the integer part from a fractional number. All right, so this was about rounding numbers in JavaScript. So for rounding, we have four methods, round, seal, flow, and trunk. And I hope with these examples, the difference between these methods are clear to you. Let's go ahead and comment this code. And let's now talk about another method which is available on this math object, which is the square root method. Okay, so to this square root method, you can pass any value and the square root method will return the square root of that value. So for example, if I pass 16, the square root of this value will be 4, right? So let's go ahead and let's see if that's the case. If I save the changes, here you can see it has returned 4. In the same way, if I pass 9 here, then the square root of 9 will be 3. If I save the changes, 3 has been returned. So the square root method returns the square root of a given number. All right, then we also have the min and max method on math object, which returns the minimum and maximum value from a list of numbers. Let's understand this. So on this math object, let's call max. Okay, and to this we can pass a list of numbers. So maybe 5, 10, 23, and 7 okay now from this list this max method will return the maximum value okay so in this example the maximum value is going to be 23 so let's go ahead and let's save the changes and let's see if 
we get that maximum value if i save the changes here you can see 23 has been returned so this max method will return the maximum value from a given list of numbers on the other hand the min method will return the minimum value from a given list of numbers so instead of max here let's use min and the minimum value in this list is 2 so this min method should return 2 if i save the changes here it has returned 2 so this is the use of max and min method now this max and min method also do type coercion so for example let's say let's use this max and min method here and let's say some of these values are string values okay so this 23 is string this 7 is also string okay here let's say this 2 is string and this 10 is string so when we are using this max and min method on this list this max and min method will first convert these string numeric values to its number type and then it will return the maximum or minimum value so if i go ahead and save the changes we should have the same result okay so these string values were uh, first converted to its numeric type and then this max method returned the maximum value from the list however remember that the min and max method does not do passing and by passing i mean let's say we have an alpha numeric value here so let's say 23 pixel okay in this case this max method will not perform a parsing here so it will not extract this numeric value 23 and then do, do the comparison it's not going to be like that so if i save the changes here you can see it has returned nan because this string value was converted to nan and from this expression it has returned nan okay so this was about square root method min and max method now let's go ahead and talk about another very important method on this math object which is the random method so this math object has a method called random and this random method you know it returns a random value between 0 and 1 so let's go ahead and log it in the console Okay, if i save the changes you will notice that it has returned a random fractional value between 0 and 1 if i save the changes again another random value will be logged if i save the change again another random value has been logged okay so random method returns a random value between 0 and 1 now if you want to generate a random number between 0 and a given number n then we can multiply this result with that number so for example if you want to get a random number between 0 and 10 then multiply this result with 10 okay so multiply by 10 and now this expression you know this complete expression will return a random number between 0 and 10 if i go ahead and save the changes now you can see that we are getting a random number between 0 and 10 right now here these random numbers have this fractional part right so if you want to generate a random number of integers then we can you know remove this fractional part from this generated random number and for that we can use the trunk method or the flow method right so here let's use trunk method so on this expression you know we are passing this expression which is generating a random number between 0 and 10 to this trunk method so now we will get a random number from 0 to 9 if i save the changes here we have 9 4 5 1 7 5 6 5 2 okay so a random number between uh, from 0 and 9 is being generated here so you can see we also had the 0 okay now if you want to get a random number between 1 and 10 then all you have to do is you have to add 1 to this expression so not here but here okay if i save the changes now we will get a random number from 1 to 10 okay so this expression here let me copy this this expression will generate a random number between 1 and 10 so 1 2 10 and this value 1 and 10 will also be included in the result 
all right so this is how you can generate a random number in javascript using math.random method so this is all from this lecture thank you for listening and have a great day